Hey YouTube and welcome back to A Beginner's Guide to Dark Souls. We're going to pick up right where we left off. Uh, we're in the catacombs and pinwheels room. Uh, after you beat the pinwheel, uh, you're going to want to head over here. Uh, this opens up when you beat the boss and you're going to want to head up this ladder. And uh, you'll come up here and you'll encounter total darkness. Uh, this is where that skull lantern item uh, that I mentioned earlier will come in handy. Um, I forgot to last video, but uh, if you head on back this way, uh, this way will lead up to, if you keep on following this path, uh, it doesn't look like there's a path, but there is, uh, it leads back to the uh, catacombs. And uh, if you head on back to where those bone wheels were all uh, rolling at me and trying to come around to get me, if you head on up that way, there's another necromancer inside that doorway. Uh, that's the last necromancer in the area. Uh, if you kill that necromancer, if you've killed all the other necromancers, I believe he's guaranteed to drop a skull lantern. Uh, you do want to have a skull lantern for this area. As you can see, it's pitch black. We can't see anything. So uh, we're going to switch over to our skull lantern. I'm going to switch out my uh, talisman for now since... Uh, I don't really need it. Uh, I only have one heal miracle, so it's not that useful. Uh, so you see here, uh, if you hold it out like this, we can light up the area. And we can see where we're going, at least uh, better than we can without it. So, uh, if you don't have it, you have to follow these markers, and it's uh, quite treacherous. So uh, we're going to proceed with caution through this area. Uh, as you can see, we're in the Tomb of the Giants. This is where we were transported earlier when we went in the, uh, uh, the coffin. And uh, if you look up here, you can see... Uh, we truly are in the Tomb of the Giants. This is the uh, lair of most of the uh, big skeletons. So I'm going to switch back to my Silver Knight Shield. Pretty sure I'm still fast rolling, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, you can't block and fight at the same time or hold a light, so you have to basically get up close to them. The good thing is, is their aggro range is quite small. Uh, yeah, you can uh, usually just strafe around them. I should have, uh, see, you can just uh, kind of get around them quite easily. It's not doing a lot, but uh, yeah, just two-hand your weapon, one-hand your weapon, and uh, take them down. They're not very hard. So, uh, scary-ass skeleton here. Uh, if you come on over here, uh, you can actually see there's an item over there. Uh, if you run and make that jump, you can actually make it. I've made it a couple of times. Uh, I'm not going to do the jump. There's some scary enemies over there. I do believe it's just like a soul of a proud knight or something. So uh, I'll show you, I might show you guys where that item is later. Uh, come on down here. Uh, if you look here, there's another large skeleton. So we're going to pull out our shield. And, uh... Well, uh, that's pretty fortunate. He fell down. I'm not sure if he died, though. We didn't get any souls for that. Uh, pick up a large soul of a proud knight here. Uh, this is kind of a trick here. Uh, if you go down over here... This way leads down to two more of those large skeletons. It's kind of dangerous because you have to fight two on this small kind of area. Uh, and you can get knocked off easy because there's also a skeleton archer who shoots at you from over there. You can kind of hear him shooting. Uh, you can get to the same area and pick up a hidden item if you go through this way. Uh, the same area that it leads to. If you come over here and if you just kind of drop off here, uh, you'll land on this platform. And uh, there's a humanity here. So uh, we're going to top off for essence. It does sound like... Yeah, the uh, skeleton that fell down is down here. So uh, we're going to try a plunging attack on him. Yep, killed him in one hit. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, take that other way down that I just told you, where you fight the two skeletons, you slide down and you, you slide down right here. So it takes you to the same area, you just wouldn't have been able to get the item. So uh, heading over here, I'm just going to break this because I feel like it. And uh, you can see a bonfire down there. You can just walk down here. There's also a, a ladder right here. And uh, it's pretty cool. If you look out here, you can see the demon runes. That's the demon runes uh, where you fight. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, you have the binoculars in my bar. Uh, right there, that pathway right there, that's where you run up to fight Ceaseless Discharge. That's that little walkway right there. That's where you walk around. Ceaseless Discharge would have been standing right up there. Pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, you walk over here, you can light this bonfire. And, uh, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to kindle this bonfire up to max, since uh, we can do that now. Uh, the right of kindling, of course, lets us kindle up to 20. Actually, I think uh, we're just going to kindle this fire up to 15. I'm not going to kindle it to max. And 
And uh, I'm going to do some leveling up. I'm going to pop all these soul items that we picked up. I'm pretty sure all of them are on my bar, so it's pretty awesome. Alright, so we got a bunch of souls now. Uh, we're going to do some... I guess we can level up twice. Um, we haven't leveled up our damage in a long time. I'm comfortable with my health, so I'm going to level up my decks. So, uh, heading on out for the bonfire, head on back up the ladder. And pull out our light here. And if you come over here, you will find an NPC. And uh, we're going to chat to this NPC. You look reasonably sane. What are you doing in the caves? Are you a cleric or something? Well, uh, we're not a cleric. We just have heal spells. It doesn't make us a cleric. Uh, even if you are a cleric, if, you know, if you're a paladin s character or you started as a cleric, just answer no. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but, well, we're friends now. I'll split it with you. In any case, have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> so, he has a creepy, ominous laugh like many characters in this game, but uh, we walk over to this light here to see what he had to say, or what he was talking about. This is what I do, my friend. The trinkets are be stripping off your corpse. That's the real treasure. Alright, so we're down in the pit. We don't lose any health from that because of the cutscene. Pretty awesome. And uh, some items down here. Uh, large Proud Knight Soul. Two Large Proud Knight Souls. And uh, this is actually a Skull Lantern again. So uh, if you didn't pick up a Skull Lantern uh, in the catacombs, you can pick one up here. But you do have to navigate through the first part of the Tomb of Giants for that one. So it kind of sucks. So, uh, head on over this way. Uh, you can use the side here as a marker of where you're going. Run along this side, but don't fall off here. So I just run it up here, and uh, you'll see an item up there. And we're going to go grab this item. Uh, note that when you grab this item, you will only grabbing this item triggers a certain enemy to spawn down here. Uh, so if you don't want to have that enemy spawn, don't grab this item. It's a white titanite chunk. I'm going to grab it because we're going to need it most likely. So as you can see, something spawned behind me. Uh, it's a. It's, these are skeleton towers. Uh, they're completely... You know, not dangerous at a distance. They do have one attack where they can fall down and hit you from a distance, but it's only doesn't happen that often. Uh, of course, we have to fight them in the dark, but having a long weapon does help. Uh, when you get up close to them, they do an attack where they kind of wave around all their arms like that. You can see there's more than one down here, or there's more than two. I mean, so I'm trying to hit them all at once right here. Uh, these are some of the only enemies you can farm for white titanite chunks. That's most likely what fell right there. These, those are probably white chunks. Wow, did they all drop white chunks? They did. Or three of them did at least. Alright, cool. Usually I'm, so, uh, yeah, you can farm these guys for white chunks. I just got three from them. That's pretty amazing. I'm not even wearing the, the ring, but... Anyway, uh, once you've killed those guys... I'm pretty sure there's a fourth one. No, wait, that was all four minutes, I think. So, uh, once you've killed all them, uh, head on over here, and we'll find a familiar character. This is the cleric lady from, uh, this is who Petrus got separated from, so, uh, see what she's doing down here. So she says uh, that her escorts, those two uh, clerics that were with her, have gone hollow and aren't far from here. She's uh, she's not lying; they really aren't far from here. So uh, just uh, head on over here, and uh, you can see, yeah, here they come. So uh, you're gonna want to fight them away from her because you don't want to accidentally hit her while fighting them. 
Uh, they actually are kind of difficult foes. It's, it's not really they're difficult, it's that there's two of them and they do that. Holy shit. And uh, they do heal, of course. Uh, I don't want to be near Rhea. Uh, this is kind of annoying to fight in the dark, I will admit. I just kind of whiff the spell there. I'm going to try to cheese them out for backstabs because uh, they are kind of annoying when there's the two of them. Because uh, the one heals while the other one distracts you there. One's dead. I do believe this one is the more dangerous one. He has a Crescent Axe. That axe actually does magic damage. As you can see, it's going through my shield. A little bit, at least. There. And, uh, yeah. They're down. So, uh, we vanquished uh, the two hollows, as she said. So let's go back and talk to her. Trouble my failings have caused. I am certain that both Vince and Nico are grateful to you. Thank you so very much. Here, these belonged to them. You deserve them more than I. So, uh, she'll give you, uh, I don't know why that doesn't say miracle replenishment, like every other miracle you get says, like, miracle, whatever, but that's a, that's a miracle. Uh, it causes you to have slight HP regeneration over 60 seconds. It's kind of useful, I suppose. Uh, for PvE, it's not very useful for PvP. You're welcome. So, uh, moving on, we're going to go on past uh, where those clerics were. It's cool to know when you use this light, that's what actually makes those blue lights appear, is uh, when you hold up this light. See? So uh, if you can see off in the distance, the blue lights are lighting up a bunch of uh, scary hands, so there's some more skeleton towers in the darkness. See, that's the uh, falling attack. They like to do that when you're in uh, these long corridors. It is kind of hard to avoid, though, unfortunately, because uh, you pretty much have to get in range of it to hit them. I guess you can hit them when they fall down like that. So, uh, yeah. Whoa. So, uh, the second one hit, fell down and hit me from behind. I didn't expect that. Alright, so that's actually can do a pretty cool combo. A strong attack, and then uh, or a weak attack, then a strong attack. So it's good to know. I've never used Lucerne before this playthrough, so uh, you always got to learn the little tricks of your weapon when you're uh, learning. Is there another skeleton down here? All right, so we are, we're going to come up this ladder and you'll come to a wall. This is an illusory wall. And now uh, we're going to come up uh, back near the bonfire. Uh, I'll show you guys where the bonfire is. If you guys need it, I'm not going to tag it, but if you guys need to, the bonfire is right there. Uh, where we are right now is when you slide down from that or when you drop down from the humanity, you can run along this path here over to where we were. Uh, it's, it leads back up, of course, but we're going to take a little detour over here. Uh, yeah, that hit me. Uh, we're going to fall down here in this little hole, and uh, this is kind of dangerous. If you look here, as you can see, there's a big skeleton and there's multiple. I think there's like four or five in this area. But uh, there's two items in here that we're going to pick up. There's a really important item, and there's a soul item right there. So uh, we're going to fight these skeletons. I'm going to try to get a plunge attack off on this one. All right, I need to get a plunge attack on the one. Shit. Yeah. All right. So that happened. I'll meet you guys back here. Alright, so we're back here. Um, probably the problem there was I was trying to block without my shield out. I was blocking with Lucerne, and that obviously doesn't work very well. Um, I do think the plunge attack method is probably the best method, to be honest, because, like, as you can see, there was more that rushed out of the darkness, so I need to kill as many as quickly as possible. So, try this again. Did I get three? 
Oh, that's awesome. I got three of them. Okay, that's really... Oh, shit. Come on, let's dance. Alright. Uh, do you think there's at least one more skeleton in here? Yeah. I think there's two, actually. So there's a lot. There's like six or seven in here, actually. There's more than four or five. This is a pretty dangerous area. A lot of the times what you can do is uh, put on a ring of sacrifice and you can run through the area, just grab the items and, and just die. But uh, I'll show you guys. I'm showing you guys how to do the, this. I think I've aggroed the other one. Yeah. Shit. Not a good time to do that. Good time to do that, though. There we go. So fighting them in the dark, of course, sucks. Um, your target distance is lowered, so uh, that's part of the problem here. I break block and turn around, and they're not blocking anymore because I'm not facing them, of course, and I get hit. Or I just don't see where they're coming from. So come over here, uh, grab this. It's a soul of a brave warrior. You're damn right we're a brave warrior. So, uh, yeah. And uh, we're going to head on over here to uh, probably the most important item in Catacombs. Uh, this is the large divine number. This is the item that you use to upgrade divine weapons from plus 5 to plus 10. So uh, we will be doing that since uh, pretty sure we have enough chunks to do that. I mean, we picked up a whole bunch. Yeah, we got nine chunks. Pretty sure we will do that if we pick up a slab. So uh, yes, there are slabs for uh, every type of Titanite. Like, there's not just a regular slab. There's red slabs, uh, blue slabs and uh, white slabs. So uh, we'll need a white slab to get it up to plus uh, 10. So uh, heading on back up here. Uh, we didn't waste too much Estus from that, but uh, I am going to go revive the human. Because uh, I do like to be human in this area, you guys will see why. Uh, it's also possible that sometimes you get PvP in this area. It's not like uh, the lower level areas where you're going to fight you know, a twinked out person. Sometimes you can fight people who it's actually a fair battle and uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, heading on back up here. Uh, we're gonna go talk to that asshole who kicked us into the pit. Oh, you. I. Well, let's just calm down. Talk about this. I did you wrong, but I didn't mean it. These temptations, they can, well, overcome me. You know what I mean, don't you? Please, forgive me. You and me, we're jolly undead outcasts, aren't we? Uh, no matter if you forgive him or not, which you don't forgive him, he's a dickbag. Uh, say no here. Well, for heaven's sake, let's not mope about, eh? You're still alive. I said I'm sorry. I know. Take this. It proves something, doesn't it? If you say no here, he'll give you the twin humanities. If you say yes, he just he won't give it to you. And uh, you get the same outcome. He just kind of stands there creepily. Uh, you can do what you want with him now. Uh, you can kill him if you want to. You get his shit. You get some humanities. Uh, we don't get his shit. You get, as you can see, he's just using the eagle shield and the thief set and like a winged spear, I think. But uh, you get the crescent axe that those uh, clerics were using, and you get some humanity. But uh, I wouldn't recommend killing him because after the Tomb of the Giants, he appears as a vendor in uh, Firelink Shrine, and he sells... Some pretty cool stuff, and he sells the other two masks that the uh, the pinwheel guy was wearing. Because you see, we got the mask of the child. He sells the other two, so I wouldn't recommend killing him. Just leave him there. So uh, we're gonna head on into the tomb. Uh, I do believe, yeah, this is the um, most dangerous enemy in the tomb. These are the skeleton dogs. They're called by most people. I do believe their official name is skeleton beast, but skeleton dog. Uh, they're extremely dangerous. Uh, they have one attack where they rear up and slash at you, and it usually one-shots players. Uh, probably won't one-shot me because of my high armor, but most players it would. Uh, a New Game Plus, they're especially dangerous, and they take up a lot of stamina. The only reprieve is, of course, they don't have a crazy amount of health. They have, like, 400 health, maybe. So uh, we're going to try to take this guy out. See, they don't actually have a lot of health. 
but uh, they are pretty dangerous. So uh, we're gonna head through this fog gate. But when you head through this fog gate, be careful because if you hear something, you can hear a pit pattering of something running at you, and you can see something moving around down there because there's a black knight. <laughs> so uh, run back over here. Did that just happen? Okay, so apparently, really? Okay. Uh, apparently the Black Knight ran off the cliff and died when he was coming up here. So, okay. Uh, but if you, if, you know, he didn't run off the cliff, come back here where you fought the Skeleton Dog. It's a wider area. You can fight him. There's no archer. Well, there is. But, uh, yeah. I guess he fell off and we got a free white chunk. But uh, it would have been nice if we got another... We haven't been getting any Black Knight weapons. We been any luck. I was watching a playthrough of a guy... He was getting like all Black Knight weapons every time, and he had no item. He had no humanity. So, careful. These guys usually, when they're at a range of use, when they'll do their more dangerous attacks, like most enemies. Look, uh, that attack right there, as you can see, is really dangerous. If all of the you know, smashes connect with you, it does the same amount of damage. It is annoying fighting these things with uh, an archer shooting at me. And uh, he jumped down a hole, so we're going to take this opportunity to go kill Mr. Archer over here. Uh, yeah, be careful of them. As you can see, their kick can knock you back, and if you're near an edge, that kick will just send you over an edge dead. I will admit, I usually come through this area with a higher upgraded weapon, so I'm kind of not used to the amount of damage I'm doing, but uh, it's okay. Uh, come over here and grab a soul of a brave warrior. Uh, you can see there's skeleton dogs tripping out over here, because, uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a jump attack on this guy. Probably a horrible idea. Like, these skeleton dogs are very dangerous. I'm not lying when I say they are. They're very difficult foe. It's hard to get hits in on them, especially in this area. Oh, that's why that one's not dying. That's the new one. Oh shit! I'm like right at the edge. All right. So uh, yeah, that was a bit more difficult than it had to be. Uh, skeleton dogs are quite annoying. Lucerne isn't the best weapon for fighting them either. It's kind of slow. It's uh, f quicker weapons are very easy with those guys. You can just strafe around them, and get a little hit in on them. But uh, anyway, uh, head on down to here, and. Uh, he head this way, we're gonna, this is where the Black Knight is usually standing, but since we walked above him, kind of aggroed him, and he ran all the way up here, so we're going to run past where he was. And uh, this is an item over here. Uh, this is the Effigy Shield, never really used this shield, uh, I'm not actually sure what it does, if it's anything special. Uh, shield. Um... Oh, it's got really good lightning defense. All right, so that's the lightning defense shield, I guess. All right, so there's your lightning defense shield, guys. If you uh, if you want a lightning defense shield, uh, there it is. But we pretty much passed all the lightning enemies in the game, so it's kind of uh, pointless at this point. Uh, you can actually see down there. There's a bonfire in the in the darkness. So yes, there is a bonfire coming up. Uh, so head on over here, uh, being cautious as we go. Uh, this is another area where I'm used to skipping. You can skip most of this area, surprisingly, so uh, I'm yet again not 100% sure where everything is. Uh, you can actually walk. Oh, no, you can't. I was thinking you could walk past that dog. Actually, you might be able to. Yeah, you can, but... Uh, yeah. So we're just going to walk past him, and uh, if you head on down here, if you hug the left wall here, uh, we'll come to that bonfire we saw in the darkness. So uh, pretty close to the last bonfire, but uh, there's no more bonfire in, in the area. But uh, we are going to kindle this one up to maximum. Mostly because uh, we can't use our heal spell right now without uh, going in the inventory a lot, so I'll just uh, do this.
And uh, I think I'm going to throw a bunch of my weapons in my bottomless box so I don't get it all clogged up like I have been. Because I really only need my two weapons and my shields. I'll keep my partisan with me, I guess. Oh, we need the talisman. Dragonfire shield can stay. Alright, so basically we got everything. I'm pretty sure my inventory is quite clear now. Oh yeah, that's so easy to switch to stuff now. Alright, cool. Alright, so uh, yeah, if you put stuff in your bottomless box, of course, freeze up your inventory. You shouldn't have to explain that. Uh, I think I'm going to level up once too. I think I had enough to level up. Yeah. Um, let's get our decks up to 28. And I'm uh, going to head on back out into the tomb. So, uh, as you can remember, there's a dog right here. Uh, we are going to fight it this time, though. Come on. Come on, doggy. Uh, that's the attack that super hurts the stamina. As you can see, I have 76 stability and it took up half my stamina. That's the that's that one attack that fucks you if it hits you. Uh, so yeah, he jumped back off the edge that you can kind of choose him that way, like the uh, the Batwing Gargoyles demons in Anorlando. So, uh, now that we've done that, uh, we're going to head on down where that thing actually fell, because the path uh, is over here. Uh, I do think you can skip that demon entire, or that, those two entirely, but uh, I wanted to fight them just to get some extra souls. So, uh, head on down here. Uh, if you go in here, I do think there's another white chunk, so we're picking up white chunks all over the place. Uh, so, weird thing glitched into the wall there. Anyway, uh, if you head on here, there's actually, I think, three skeleton dots. Yeah, there's three. One, two, three. Yeah, so, uh, I'm not going to have the bow equipped. So, we're just going to try to pull one at a time here, at least just maybe pull one only. Yeah, we got one. No, no scary attack. I really hate these things with passion. I gotta get used to the fact that uh, they two hit combo there. Circling around them is easier, but it's just when I can't see and it's so narrow around here, circling around them is uh, I, I could just fall off the edge, so yeah. Uh, there's an item we can get later in the game that provides uh, permanent light without having to take up a shield slot. Uh, you can come and do this area after that because uh, the end areas of the game you can do in any order, and I'm just doing them in this order. Uh, you can also, if you're a mage character, you can use a cast light spell. It does the same thing. Puts a light orb above your head without having to, uh, you know, hold anything. Uh, we can skip those two guys. We don't have to fight them. Because uh, the pathway we have to go leads down here. Yeah. So if you head right here, uh, there's another item. Uh, this is a soul of a brave warrior. And uh, if you head on down here, uh, we're going to find a ladder. And this ladder basically leads uh, into the light of Tomb of the Giants. So we're kind of, Tomb of the Giants isn't super long, but it's uh, kind of dick, especially that area with the three dogs up there if you choose to fight them or run into them by accident. Um, I wanted to show you guys something, maybe. Yeah, because we can warp. Oh, wait, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I will. All right, so... Uh, we're gonna come down here. Uh, I don't think there's anything over there. No. Uh, and if you come out here, we're gonna come to the Tomb of the Giants exterior. Uh, you can see we don't need a light anymore here. It's perfectly lit. That's the darkness over there. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a shortcut how to get here. Uh, I'm gonna use a homeward bone.
All right, so uh, we're back at the bonfire. We've kindled the max, and uh, since we can warp, uh, we're gonna warp to Tomb of the Giants. This warps to the other bonfire, the first one. Uh, we're gonna do this because uh, the shortcut starts there, and uh, we could just homeward bone to this one after if we wanted to. But uh, you can't warp to that one we're just at. You have to warp to the uh, first one with the ladder. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna head back up this ladder, and uh, we're gonna take the shortcut through the Tomb of the Giants, and uh, we're gonna get pick up an item that we missed. I'll show you guys the shortcut. Uh, we can literally skip all the enemies this way. This is the way I usually get through the tomb. Uh, just hug this wall here. You can skip this dog. And uh, I don't even need a light. I actually know my way through here without a light. Uh, so just run through here. Uh, run towards the glowing little body over there. You can kind of see it in the dark. Using this body as a marker, you can just kind of walk off here. And uh, you'll land down here. And uh, you'll see this narrow pathway. Uh, if you walk over to that item, there's going to be about five or six skeleton towers that surround you. So I'll show you guys what to do. Just walk over to the item. Pick up the covetous silver serpent ring. You can see the towers are all around me. Uh, that is like the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. It gives you 20% increased uh, soul find. Uh, we're not going to fight these skeleton towers because uh, we have enough white chunks, so I don't need to farm them. Uh, fall down here onto this platform. And uh, look out here. Hug the wall and fall down on this platform. And you can see we are exactly where we homeward boned from. So you can get down here in like a minute from the first bonfire. So uh, pretty useful. Uh, I'm going to put my... Since we don't need the, uh, you know... Lightning where I'm going to put my talisman back on, and uh, we're going to head on over this way. Uh, this is one of the orange gates that opened when we placed the Lord Vessel. It was right here. So uh, we're going to head on in here, and uh, there's another crystal lizard, and uh, we do have an invader. As you can see, the uh, NPC from the catacombs that I mentioned, Paladin Leroy, has come back to invade us. Uh, we got some more white chunks from that lizard. Uh, so uh, Paladin Leroy spawns around that corner to the right here, uh, so here he's coming. He's not very smart. He uses a really heavy weapon that you can counter really easy. Did he just block with that? Yeah, he did. I'm sorry, there's no wogging around here. I'm sorry, there's no wogging, Leroy. If uh, when he backs up like that, he does go for a heal spell. He is a cleric. That didn't hit him really. Oh shit. He does actually hit really hard. Um, don't let him get a heal spell off, of course. Uh, shit, man. Hammer does magic damage, so you can't block it. Forgot about that. So, I'm gonna run away and heal, because he's fat rolling, so he can't actually chase me very well. <laughs> Having trouble with Leroy, are we? Usually I just destroy him in one or two hits, but... It's not happening this time. Holy fuck. He really does hit hard. Like what? Ah, it's so annoying. Especially fighting him on that little ledge there. Fight him in here, it'd probably be easier. Come on. It's really annoying that I cannot block that. <sighs> Why am I doing so bad against Leroy? It's one of those days, isn't it? But anyway, yeah, he shouldn't have been that hard, but I let him heal twice. We get a nice amount of souls from him at least. Uh, we get a humanity from him. Uh, and now uh, we can pick up two, two more humanity and we actually pick up his weapon and Sanctus. Uh, Grant is actually one of the most, I think it's the either the most powerful or second most powerful weapon in the game. Uh, it has an A scaling in strength and a B in faith, so it's, it's really awesome. Or maybe the other way around, but uh, it does have super high requirements to be well, a good weapon. You need like 50 strength and... 40 faith for it to be the best weapon, but it also does uh, split damage, it does part magic damage, part physical. So it's only the best weapon on the surface, but uh, if you're looking for technical means of what's the most powerful weapon, I do believe the Grant is the most powerful weapon in terms of raw damage. As you can see, it was doing immense damage through my shield, because it does part magic damage. So uh, 
more chunks, yes. These guys, I'm usually when I'm farming chunks, I have to kill, you know, I have to farm these guys many times to even get one chunk, but uh, they're dropping them like candy. Yeah, there's a guy shooting arrows over there, so uh, be careful. Is that another chunk? Damn, man. <laughs> Alright, so uh, if you come over here, this skeleton will actually disappear. Uh, don't fight these two skeletons right there, because that one on the right, see, he, they kick, and he'll kick you right off the edge. And pretty much every time I come here, if I fight them there, that one skeleton just kicks me off the edge. Even if you have your shield up, the force will push you back off the edge. Yeah, see, they like that kick attack. A lot of people say the skeletons, I think they do drop Murakumos in here, but the large skeletons here, they don't use Murakumos. That's a that's just a big falchion. That is not a Murakumo. I do think they drop it though. Murakumo is a really cool weapon. It's a curved greatsword. I think it's the best, yes, the best curved greatsword. Has really high stat requirements though. Uh, they're not gonna drop one for us though. I've actually I've only seen them drop one once ever. It's pretty rare. But, uh, yeah. So we're going to come to uh, this last room of the Tomb of the Giants. Uh, you can see there, we're actually fighting a whole bunch of pinwheels at once. Uh, they're called pinwheel servants. They're smaller versions of pinwheel. Uh, we'll pick up a soul of a hero here. And uh, you see here, there's these weird skeleton babies here. Uh, these are on a constant spawn. They never stop spawning, and they spawn from the water. So uh, we're going to head on in the water. Uh, the spawn as you can see they're starting to spawn around us. They do drop humanity and a decent amount of souls, so if you throw on the both the rings and stay here for however long it takes, you can literally farm souls forever. They don't drop a crazy amount, but like if you put the ring on and the chance that they drop humanity, it's a pretty good farming spot for that. So uh, we're just going to take out the pinwheel servants, however. Uh, the babies do do... Uh, oh shit. Whoa. So I'll uh, come back here and I'll show you guys the better way to handle this. That's, I guess, that's a prime example of why you don't go in the water. But uh, I'll show you guys a better way to handle this area. All right, so we're back at the uh, pinwheel area. Uh, just run over here. I'm going to run and grab my blood stain real fast. Uh, so don't go in. Holy fuck. No. So, yeah. Uh, the skeleton assholes can imprison you in a little box and then you get fucked by the pinwheels of fireballs. So I'm gonna run up here and heal and get rid of this toxin. Alright, so the best way to handle this area is uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on a shield with better fire defense. So I'm gonna throw on my Dragon Crest shield for now. So, uh, run on here because they shoot fire damage. Uh, so, run on here. There's a whole bunch of them up here. They actually don't have a whole lot of health. See, two hits will take them down. And uh, since there's a whole bunch up here, this is pretty much what was raping me earlier. See if Dragon Crest Shield makes them do pretty much nothing now. So, just beat the shit out of them since they pissed me off. Hardcore. They also have a chance to drop uh, white slabs uh, and the masks of the pinwheel. So you can get those to drop if you really want to. Uh, there's a couple more, I believe. Yeah, there's one here. Missed the plunge attack. See those skeleton babies? They actually do a good amount of poison buildup. Uh, this is white chunk, I'm assuming that dropped from one of the pinwheel servants that uh, fell down here. Uh, mask of the Child, see we got um, one of the masks there, except I already have that mask, so uh, that's kind of useless. I miss uh, attack there. Can't backstab them, I'm like, fairly certain you can, I've never been able to. And I always try. So uh, yeah, now that all the pinwheels, I do believe all of them are dead. Uh, there's an item over here. I think this is another white chunk. Yeah, we have like 20 white chunks, we don't even need them. So 
So I come up here, I think there's one more pin wheels. No, we got him. So uh, if you run up here, I'm going to top off my health. You can grab another soul over here. And uh, if you drop down here, into that hole down here, uh, you can find a super item. Uh, this is a white type knight's lab. So this is what we needed to get our weapon to uh, plus, or plus 10. So uh, if you see here, we'll fall down to where uh, the water is and where those skeleton guys. But what we're going to do actually now is uh, Homer Bone. And uh, we're going to head over to Andre. So back at the parish, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and we're going to upgrade our divine weapon to plus 10 before we uh, go on to the next part of the game. Well, of course, you're the only one we can give it to. Ah, splendid. Splendid. Thank you. Andre of Astora never disappoints. I assure you. Alright, so uh, what we want to do here is go over to uh, Modify, and you can see we can modify the Divine Longsword plus 5 to plus 6. And we have 17 white chunks, that's ridiculous. I didn't farm it all. That's, that's just ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get... Divine Longsword plus, well, we're just going to get it all the way up, so plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, and you can see here it takes a White Titanite slab, but uh, Divine Longsword plus 10. Uh, we can also upgrade the, uh, that was weird. Anyway, anyway, uh, we have a uh, plus 10 Divine Weapon now, it'll be quite more useful in the next area. Uh, so that means the longsword will do a bunch more damage now, since it was only doing maybe like 50 damage per hit. Maybe it'll do maybe 100, almost 100, hopefully. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head on back to the Tomb of the Giants. And we're back in the room uh, where we killed the pinwheel servants. I did kill them again uh, really quickly. They're all dead, as you can see, and I have more souls. So uh, head on up here. There's no more items in here. And... Uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to equip my Divine Longsword now that we can actually equip it quickly. And uh, I'm going to smash through this fog gate. I would recommend having a Divine Weapon for this, so uh, head on through this fog gate. Alright, so this is the Gravelord Nido encounter. Uh, you're going to want to do when you first roll down is try to heal because uh, you take damage. Uh, he also shoots uh, Gravelord swords out of the ground like that from a distance. Uh, the way you uh, know about those attacks is he screams and he uh, casts them a few seconds later. Uh, I was pretty surprised here about how much damage the uh, Divine Longsword was doing. I destroyed that skeleton in two hits and I kept going with that one. Uh, something strange happened there, I'm not sure why that skeleton didn't die. Uh, but as you can see here, you just keep rolling away, uh, usually when you hear the scream, and you can usually avoid this uh, Grave Lord Swords. Uh, he does do a toxic buildup that is toxic, and the uh, skeletons do poison, so it can be very dangerous. Uh, this is why you need a divine weapon. If you don't have one, uh, the skeletons will not die. So uh, when they're dead, though, feel free to switch back to your weapon. You don't need them. Uh, Grave Lord Nito himself is not that hard. He's uh, probably the slowest enemy in the game. Uh, as you can see, look at uh, the... The windows to get counters on him is massive. He swings so slow, uh, most of his hits whiff over your head when you get up close to him. Uh, the one thing about him though is do not go to the other end of the room where he uh, where he spawns from. Uh, there's three giant skeletons over there. Uh, I would not recommend fighting them with him, it's very, very annoying. Uh, one cool thing about the fight though is, is Nito can damage his own skeletons, so uh, if you don't have a divine weapon you can 
hopefully use that to your advantage. Uh, his attacks will kill them in one hit usually. Uh, when he bends over and crouches like that, he's about to do his uh, AoE Miasma attack. Just uh, run away at a distance. You need to get pretty far away, and uh, you can avoid the attack. Uh, so just uh, basically stay up close to him. Uh, if you feel nervous, just strafe around to his back, keep hitting him. Uh, he's actually really easy. Uh, the first time in my first playthrough, I beat him in my first run, and I managed, and I pulled the uh, big skeletons too, so uh, yeah, he's not that difficult. Uh, you can just, look. you can see, just get massive counters on him. Uh, just, yeah, keep running in and out when he bent, uh, bends over like that. You can see uh, I haven't even taken any damage since I fell down, I don't think. So, uh, yeah, just, it's very simple. Uh, if you look over where that sarcophagus was, uh, it's where the uh, Grave Lord Servant thing was, because this, is, of course, is, uh, you know, the Master, this is the Grave Lord. And, uh, yeah, a couple more hits and he goes down, very simply. And uh, with ease, we've uh, gotten our first Lord Soul. Uh, Grave Lord Nito is down, and there's uh, three left to get. So uh, there's our Lord Soul, of course. Lord Soul, uh, we need... Uh, the Soul of the Witch of Isolith, the uh, Bed of Chaos, and Seath the Scaleless. So uh, we get a nice 60,000 from that. Uh, very awesome. Uh, head on over here, you might have seen this item when I was running over here. Uh, if you go through a loading screen after killing Paladin Leroy, you can grab his armor. This is the Paladin armor. Uh, it's actually really good armor. Uh, I'm not going to use it, of course. I like my armor. So uh, if you want to be a Paladin Leroy, you can put that on. Uh, you can see the sarcophagus here where the uh, Grave Lord Servant altar is. Uh, we would have been able to pray here if we came from a different way. But uh, rest at this bonfire, of course. But uh, what I'm going to do is call the episode here. We uh, beat the Tomb of Giants in one episode, just like the Catacombs. And uh, I will see you guys next time.